So there we all were, sitting around the dining room table, the whole family. The goat is outside. Grammar's right here. The aunts and the uncles are all gathered around. My cousins are all gemmed in. We're having a great, great time, and we loved it. But there was one song that we always sang, the Dylans always sang a song called The Shamrock Green. It was written in 1917 by my grandfather. He had won a contest in Quincy with it. And at every family party, my grandmother would sing it. She always waited for the perfect moment to sing. And I was waiting for grandma to sing it. I knew she could sing it. But no, she wasn't ready to sing it yet. My dad stood up. I had never seen him sing before. I was getting kind of nervous. And he said, I have an announcement. And I said, oh my god, he's going to tell us he lost his job. He said, Eddie, tell everybody what you saw last week. I couldn't have told you what I had done 15 minutes before. <laughs> last week was like an eternity ago. He saw the panicked look on my face and he said, tell everybody what you saw in Quincy Square last week. He went, oh, last week, Senator John Fitzgerald Kennedy had come to Quincy Square. They had closed down all the traffic, put up a platform, and my dad brought me down there. There were 10,000 people jammed into the square. It was great. I loved it. And everybody was cheering, and I was cheering, too. I thought it was the best thing that I ever saw. Dad put me up on his shoulders, and he looked at me, and he said, Eddie, do you see that man? He's Irish, and he's Catholic, and he's going to be our next president. And I thought that was the greatest thing I ever heard. But my Uncle Gil was sitting over in this corner of the table. He was leaning so hard on the table, it was like he was crawling across it. And he was really red in the face. And he looked up at my dad and he said, I'm not voting for that son of a rum runner. I'm voting for Richard Nixon. <laughs> well, my grandmother jumped right up. She looked down at him and said, Jim Gilchrist, I can't believe that you're voting for Richard Nixon. Well, you have to understand, my grandmother's father had come from County Roscommon, come over here as a young man, got a job working as a stable hand for the Adams family, worked his way up within a few short years, no, it wasn't that Adams family. <laughs> it was the Adams family that had presidents buried in the middle of Quincy Square. It used to confuse me, too. So he got a job working for the Adams family. That was really great. He worked his way up, and he ran the whole estate for them. Then he married... Mary Me, who was the head of the household, and together they saved up all their money. They brought in all their family from Ireland. They brought them all in. It was really great, and we were so proud of them. But then he went off and started his own construction company. He built part of Route 9. He built part of the old Route 3. He founded the Hibernians in Quincy, and he owned the land that the shipyard was made on. He owned tenements. Then he got involved in politics, and he became friends with James Michael Curley, and he helped James Michael Curley run for the mayor of Boston, which he won. And then he helped James Michael Curley run for the governorship of Massachusetts, which he won. And so what if James Michael Curley had ended up in Plymouth County Jail? It didn't matter because when he died, 
He died without a penny. He had given it all away. And now my grandmother was looking down at Uncle Gil. And her eyes were like darts. She said, Jim Gilchrist, he's Irish, and he's Catholic, and he's a good boy. Well, then Aunt Mary jumped up, and she said, Jim Gilchrist, if you vote for Richard Nixon, we're getting divorced. <laughs> Divorce, my grandmother said, stab me in the heart. <laughs> Us Irish Catholics do not get divorced. Uncle Gil was retreating off the table. He looked up and he said, I'll think about it. <laughs> which in our family was good enough. We knew in our heart of hearts he wasn't really going to vote for John Kennedy in a million years, but as long as he would say he would think about it, that was close enough for us. Aunt Mary sat back down, and she looked at Aunt Noreen, and she said, It's the whiskey. It's the whiskey. He always turns into a Republican when he's had a few too many. And she turned, she looked at me. She said, Eddie, get your guitar and help me with this next one. And she looked at Uncle Gil and she said, all right, you better listen to this song and listen to it good. Frankie and Johnny were sweethearts. Oh my good God, how they loved. They swore to be true to each other Just as true as the stars above He was her man But he done her wrong Frankie went down to the corner Just to buy a bucket of beer He said, hey, them best to bartender Is my love and Johnny been here He is my man So we kept on singing. We were having such a good time. She went right into, Won't you come home, Bill Bailey? Won't you come home? He cried the whole night long. I'll do the cooking, honey. I will pay the rent. I know I done you wrong. Remember that crazy evening that I brought you out? Shame, Bill Bailey, won't you please come home? Uh, everybody's having a great time. The drinks were passing around. Of course, they went into heart of my heart. I will love that melody. Heart of my heart. You were there. Brings back for memories when we were kids on the corner of the square. Rough and ready, guys. But oh, how we could harmonize. But then, because we were Irish and so proud to be American, we always had to sing Tora Lora Lora. Tora Lora La. Tora Lora Lora. Hush now, don't you cry. Like a morning spring in the 
yourselves a hand. That was beautiful. Thank you.